Hello you dirty potters, how are you today? Today we're gonna learn how to make a dragon's egg, and not only are we going to learn how to make a dragon's egg, we're also gonna learn how to put scale textures on almost anything that we make. You see this tool right here? This tool is called a scale maker, and it was given to me by our brand new sponsor, the Big Ceramic Store. This tool is specifically made to make scale patterns, and if I'm being honest with you, half the time I can use the edges to etch anything into my pottery that I want. It has one big side and one little side, just in case you want really small scales or you want to put scales on a tiny little teacup. But of course, being the giant D&D nerd that I am, once I got this from them, I thought, I can totally make a dragon's egg! And it's actually extremely easy to use. Here, let me show you how it works really quick. Get a little handful of clay and flatten it out, or you can use a rolling pin if you like. Either way it works. Once you have your nice flat piece of clay, you can decide whether you want smaller scales on this side or the other side, which has a larger texture tool, which is for larger scales. And it's actually already kind of curved to comfortably hold, you see? So you can just push in one right here. And every one after the first one just has to either line up or be overlapped with the very edge of the first indent. And you just keep on doing this over and over again. Now at the point of the first row, you have two options. Number one, you can get the scale maker and put it at the very tip of this portion right here, the larger portion of clay, or you can put it right below it right here and make spread out scales. The closer you put the texture tool to another scale, the closer and more tight knit and compact the scales are going to get, just like this. You see, these scales here are really close and tight knit to each other. Now I can either cut this off and attach it to a cup, or I can just make a cup and push this texture tool into the cup itself while it's still inside of one of its leather phases. Or, your second option, you can make the scales a little bit further apart. Let's get rid of this one right here. You can very easily make sure the scales stay a little bit further apart by making your first row, just like we did last time. Did you see how last time I put the texture tool right here at the very bottom of the last scale's point? About right there? Well this time, instead of putting it directly below it, I'm just gonna go a little bit further down this line right here. You see the first texture and the second texture I made, made a little line at the bottom of the scale pointing downwards. And instead of putting it right at the bottom of that scale, I'm just gonna put it at the bottom of that indent. Just like that. Do you see what I mean? These scales look a little bit further apart from each other. If you're making a very large dragon or you don't want to do as much work to put the scales next to each other, you can very easily just make sure they're a little bit further apart. These are the super close together tight knit scales where I put one texture right below the bottom of every single scale. And these ones are the farther apart scales. These ones here, you just move a little bit downwards, but make sure you put that texture right on that line. It's gonna take a little bit of practice to understand what spacing makes what after the first use of the tool. Me telling you how to use it is a lot more difficult than actually using the tool itself. For example, this was my first attempt. My scales were a little bit too far apart to the point where you can really see that little texture right there that the tool makes, and I didn't do it very clean. But, after wiping it off a little bit, it still looks like dragon scales. Mind you, this is like my first attempt at ever using this tool. These here are like my fourth and fifth attempt. So today, we're gonna put this texture on an egg form and make ourselves a nice little dragon's egg. I actually have a really nice green glaze that'll go with this and make it look like an emerald dragon's egg. Schmerg! But first, we have to throw our egg form. Potter tip! If you are on the stage of making your egg form, it's always good to cut off a little bit more of that skirt at the very bottom. This will of course make your egg look a little bit more round. 
and it actually makes it a tiny bit easier to trim if you're gonna put it on a chuck. All right, great, we have our egg form. Now all we have to do is take it off, wait until it dries in the leather soft or the leather form, and then start putting our dragon scales on. Do not, and I repeat, do not put scales on this immediately after you've thrown it. Half of the time, this is gonna end up being very sticky and tacky, and because of that, the clay is gonna stick to the tool and you're gonna leave extra marks everywhere, and it's gonna look like that one that I showed you earlier that I just tried brand new. I mean, that one wasn't really wet when I did it at first, that one was just me being bad at doing the thing. Putting texture directly on things is best done in the leather soft to leather phases. So we're gonna wrap this up real nice and neat and make sure that it gets to that phase before we put texture directly on it. Otherwise, we're probably gonna mess up the form because this is still really squishy. Shh, sweet dreams. I'm just gonna tuck you in. Make sure you dream about Dungeons and Dragons players coming to raid your castle. Okay, it's about a day later, and let's just see how dry this is now. This is pretty good. It's no longer tacky and super wet with the water that I threw it with. It's still technically either in the leather soft phase or a little bit below the leather soft phase. I don't want it to dry and I don't want it to reach the leather to leather hard phase. Otherwise, it's gonna be really hard to put dents into my clay body. You see, this tool doesn't really work at all if I do it on a harder clay, no matter how hard I push. It pretty much only works with fresh clay or non-sticky and tacky clay. If it's too sticky or freshly thrown, it's pretty much just gonna make a bunch of little indents in your clay and the pattern's not gonna be too clear. You're also gonna get a bunch of clay burgers everywhere. Potter tip! If you are doing something like an enclosed form and you're not making something that's not enclosed like a cup or a bottle, then you might wanna poke a little hole at the very bottom of your egg or enclosed form. This does one of two things. Number one, you might as well do this sooner or later because you have to do this anyway before putting it in the kiln. If you throw an enclosed form, you're gonna trap the air in here, and that means if you put it in the bisque, it will explode all your stuff. Make sure to make a little hole in there, and it's much harder to make this hole once it's inside of the leather hard phase, or even the bone dry phase. You essentially have to drill in there instead of just get your tool and make a tiny little hole. Number two, if your clay is really wet, the air will try to find a way to escape. And because of that, I have thrown a form like this before, not putting the hole at the bottom of it, and the next day I find a giant rip inside of my enclosed form, because the air of course tried to escape, and it did so by any means necessary. So make sure you put a hole at the bottom of your stuff, either after you're done throwing, or after it's become no longer tacky. Okay, now that it's no longer tacky and sticky, we can get our scale maker and put our texture in. So we're gonna wait till this dries up a little bit, trim it, then we're gonna clean up these little bits of texture and clay boogers. After that, we're most likely gonna go ahead and stick this in and make it a nice emerald green. If there's any more scales you wanna put on here, let's say you missed a couple of spots at the bottom, I highly suggest you do it now, because after this, it's gonna be a lot harder to put some more scales on there. Blurry finger potter tip. This is the egg that we just completed. It's quite nice if I do say so myself. This is probably only my fourth or fifth time using the tool that the Big Ceramic Store gave me. But this, this right here, was my first attempt. Notice how much of the texture is left and notice how many gross clay burgers are still on there. The main difference in between this and this cleaner, nicer one right here is that this one was done in the leather phase, or better yet, closer to the leather hard phase, which forced me to indent the tool into the clay body and to push a little bit harder, which is why it looks a little bit more deformed than that one back there. Instead of pushing in because this doesn't make much texture as we now know, you can technically dig into the clay body like this. 
and it'll still make a bit of a texture. But if you push and try too hard, you will make probably not so good textures and you'll end up getting a bunch of excess clay around your little textures. So remember, leather and leather hard phase, freshly thrown and no longer tacky, leather soft and a little bit below leather soft phase. The difference in between when you choose to put the texture on your clay is the difference in between Spyro the Dragon over here and Schmug that destroys entire villages. I solely made this to show you guys what no, not to do, so we don't, we don't, we don't no, need that no, anymore. That, please, that makes me no, sad to look at. No. We're just gonna wrap this one up and wait till it gets dry enough to trim. Okay, look, I get it. This is actually a lot of effort in order to make some dragon scales or even throw an enclosed form to make yourself a dragon's egg like this. Not only are some people not into that, that's a lot of work for just some texture. So I got a little cheat code for you. Let's say you really like those dragon scales and you have a couple of mugs or cups, but you don't want to go through that painstaking time and get a little roundy wheel and put texture all down one side and figure out where it goes. You don't want to do all that. Or let's say your clay body is a little bit too hard by now and you can't add any more scales. This part's uncovered. You can very easily get a tiny bit of clay, roll it out, make whatever shape you want. For me, it's a square because that's the easiest. You can get your scale maker and make that same texture we were just talking about on those mugs, side to side, angle to angle, just like this. it into any shape that you want. I favor a square, but if you want to do strips like this, or you want to do little wavy patterns like this, that's okay too. They still come across as scales. Then you can attach them onto whatever you want, considering that you score and slip them. And then you have a nice section of little scales, just like this. You see, now you have a nice little dragon scale texture right on the front of your cup. You didn't have to do all that work and painstaking activity to go through and do the entire thing. Oh, and you know I made one extra just for me. Now all I have to do is attach a really big handle to this because somebody made the mug super big and it'll be a really nice mug. Tomorrow. Okay, now let's see how we did. Oh yeah, that's ready to trim. I actually like doing this a lot, and especially for people who are production potters or people who sell cups and mugs and bowls all day. You don't exactly have to make dragon's eggs out of these all the time. You can very easily just take a slab of clay and make your own texture and put it on whatever you want. Also, I know you guys get mad at me when I do stuff off screen, but I did technically make more than one dragon's egg. And I had fun doing it, and I did it without you, and I'm not sorry about it. Please make sure that if you're making these eggs the same way I made them on the wheel or with the enclosed form technique, you poke a hole at the bottom of your stuff. 
If you don't poke a hole in this, you're not going to be able to let out all the air that you trapped in there while making the enclosed form. And because of that, you're pretty much just going to heat this up to over 1000 degrees and you're essentially going to make a tiny bomb inside your kiln. Not only are you going to lose this piece, you're going to lose any pieces that are around it and you're probably going to damage your kiln a little bit in the process. So before you put this in, make sure you get a pin tool, poke a little hole at the bottom, maybe even a little knife. The hole doesn't really have to be that big and you just make sure that you put one little hole at the very bottom of your work. Now all we have to do is wait for these to dry a little bit more and we can put them in the kiln. Thank you Dirty Potters for joining me today. A quick shout out to our sponsor, The Big Ceramic Store. They actually gave me a promo code which you can use to get yourself one of these at thebigceramicstore.com. Just in case you want to make yourself a little dragon's egg like this, this tool makes it a lot easier. If you'd like to see any of my actual artwork, the links are always down below for your beautiful Potter eyes to see. We have a Discord and a Facebook community. This way you guys can keep up with the channel and those weekly videos that I'd be giving you. You know you love them. I mean, I'm sure if I just keep on making dragon's eggs, nobody's gonna complain, right? Nobody's like, oh my god, everyone's doing this on YouTube. It's so played out. No, no they're not. Shut up. Good luck on your next kiln load and I will see you, Dirty Potters, next week. Why does Dante keep on doing stuff without us off screen? Okay, well, I made another dragon's egg, so how about that?